The word of God according to the gospel of St. Luke chapter 4 at verse 1 following. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Father, may the word of my mouth, the thought, the meditation, the heart of all here today be acceptable, or in the name of Christ become acceptable. You alone are our strength, our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Friday I was talking with a neighbor, and uh, don't know that you know this person, so names are irrelevant, but uh, was talking with someone that lives not too, too far from where I live, and uh, she said, uh, I know God won't put on me more than I can bear. And I said, I don't know that that's true or not. I, I think he allows us to be tempted beyond our measure by ourselves in order that we understand our need for God. Now, Jesus doesn't go out into the wilderness until two things happen. Until, A, he's full of the Holy Spirit. And, B, he's led of the Holy Spirit. You're going to end up at some point in your life, if you haven't already on several occasions, in a wilderness. And it's going to feel barren in those places. And it's going to feel like you're all alone and there's no hope. But if God is the one that led you there, and God has a habit of doing so, he'll provide the way out. Now, in Luke 1, you've got this experience of uh, John the baptizer. At verse 41, we're told that he's filled with the Holy Spirit. But by the time we get to chapter 3, or not ch verse 1, chapter 1, Verse 41. But by the time we get to chapter 3, he's already speaking out openly, publicly against the Jews, against soldiers, and against Herod himself. He's full of the Holy Spirit, but he's already in danger by chapter 3. My point is that according to Dr. Luke, God has a habit of allowing us to be in places where we might be in danger. Now, there is a second verse I need to read to you from the epistle of St. James. Chapter 1, verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. So it's a fine line to say that I'm in the wilderness, God put me here. And to say God tempts me. God puts us in places where we can be tempted. God allows us to be in places that if we don't turn to God, you and I are going to be overwhelmed. But God never tempts us. And with God's help, we overcome temptation. I'm a president of the local chapter of the Wesleyan Covenant Association, and on Thursday it was formally announced that May 1st, a new denomination is going to be birthed that I'll be going with, the Global Methodist Church. It is what the UMC claims to be in the Book of Discipline, but has not enforced in the last 20 years. Well, when the announcement was made, as you can imagine, I've gotten phone calls from clergy all over the annual conference, from lay people who are leaders in their local church, from people who heard from someone else that something was happening and they want to know the details. And I've been on text, I've been on emails, and I've been on phone calls pretty steady since the announcement was made. And the questions all come down to three various things. What's going to happen to our property? What's going to happen to my health insurance? What's going to happen with my pension? And the one question I want to ask is, what's the will of God? 
Have, have you sought out the will of God? Could it be that by the Spirit, you're being led to the wilderness? But God's not going to give you more than you can bear with God's help. There's 40 days temptation in the wilderness. And we're reminded that at the beginning of the season of Lent, We've got 40 days to see what it's like to be living led by the Spirit. And it could be that during 40 days of Lent, you may end up in the wilderness. But what you're going to discover is God is faithful. What you're going to discover is that with temptation comes the power to overcome temptation. Now, in days gone by, I used to go to the gym. That hasn't happened in several days. But in days gone by, I used to go to the gym. Now, when I, when I wanted to get stronger, I didn't take weight off the bar. I added the stress that my body was under. God is not about making you and I happy. Now, that was a good place to say amen. You blew it, but it was, God's not about that. God's about building God's kingdom. And he calls us to become part of God's kingdom. And it could well be that the stress he allows, not causes. Remember, he tempts no one, but he allows it. How do I know? It happens. If God didn't allow it, it couldn't happen. And in God's allowing the stress may be to grow our faith stronger and stronger and stronger. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they ended, he was hungry. The devil said, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. Now, isn't it interesting that the devil uses his own hunger against him? It's oftentimes the physical that provides opportunity for temptation in our lives. And yet, for 40 years, not 40 days, for 40 years, God fed the Israelites in the wilderness. For 40 years. Showing that it's not our lack that limits God's provision. That God comes when we don't have and somehow miraculously meets needs. And Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. There's more to life than physical need. There's a lot more to the world than just what you require to stay alive. It, it always amuses me when I think about the Israelites in the wilderness. For 40 years, they ate manna. Do you know what the word manna means? It means, what is it? You can just imagine the first Israelite that gets up the first morning hungry, and goes out and sees these white flakes on the ground. And he turns to his buddy and said, what is it? And somebody decided that's going to be a good name. But for 40 years, God fed the people of God. What is it? I don't know, but God provided it. And so I'm going to eat it. Man shall not live by bread alone. No. But what we need, God does provide. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, 
To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I will. You're thinking, what do you mean all this has been given to you? Well, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul refers to Satan as the God of this age. He has control, but it's during this time period only. And what's being offered here is short-term success. And Jesus says, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. He's not going to take the easy way out. He's been tempted. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus said, focus. Where's God in all this? He's the one I need to make happy. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. Now he quotes from Psalm 91. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Who's being tested here? It's not Jesus. It's the Father. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He, the Father, will command His angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. The devil's gotten smart since Jesus has been quoting Scripture to the devil. The devil says, I'm going to quote scripture back and we're going to put the father on trial. And Jesus answered, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Deuteronomy 6 and 16. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. There are times we end up in the wilderness, not because something we did wrong, but because maybe God allowed it. Maybe God called us to the wilderness. He doesn't tempt us, but he does allow trials. And in it all, the purpose is for us to go strong in our faith. Have you known trials in your life? Are you stronger for it? Well, since this is such a high in the way of sermons, let me close out with a bang. And when the devil had ended up every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Devil's coming back. He doesn't leave until Jesus comes again. You're going to face temptation, church, until you enter eternity. Either at your physical death or Jesus' return. And up until that time, the devil can return. And isn't it interesting that you can overcome many, many, many trials and still lose? Y'all remember Elijah the prophet? He stared down 450 prophets of Baal. But one woman, Jezebel, threatens him, and what does he do? He runs. What I'm saying, church, is be in for the long haul. God will not allow us to be tested beyond our measure if we have God on our side. But the real question is not, is God on our side, but are we on God's side? Amen. He's in charge. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Our Lord sets before us a table. On page 12, you hear the invitation. While you're turning there, though, let me make sure you understand that if you would receive what God offers in Christ Jesus, you're welcome at this table. You don't have to be a member of the denomination. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. If you would receive what Jesus offers, you're invited. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God, 